super interesting webinar happening today. Uh, as you guys already know, we're going to be talking about Q4. Uh, big stuff happening in Q4. Every year it's big. Every year it gets bigger and bigger. We see the numbers uh, going up every single year, and we know it's going to be a big one uh, for this year. So I can see people are joining, and that's awesome to see. Um, cool. Other than that, um, we, as always, at the end, we're going to have a and a Q&A. You guys can ask anything that comes to mind. Um, you can talk about whatever you want, and we're here to help and, and assist with anything that comes up to it. So super interesting stuff happening today. Uh, so definitely stay along for the Q&A at the, at the end. Uh, always interesting as always. Uh, so then I introduce myself real quick. My name is Danny. I'm the VP of Customer Success and Professional Services here at Magix, meaning my uh, whole objective is to try and make everyone's lives better. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, um, so we're about to get started. Um, great webinar that's happening and let's jump into it. So let's understand why Q4 is actually different. Than anything, right? We're going to talk about why it's different, how to capitalize it, and what actual best practices we can put into place in order to make sure we maximize the most of this Q4. So first of all, we all know it's a holiday shopping rush. People are shopping, they're looking for it. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, every year, the numbers just explode year over year. Uh, the festive content is happening, gift giving atmosphere. Everyone is shopping. Everyone needs gifts for this. How purchase intent. Anyone that's scrolling on any social is worth a high purchase intent. It's a specific audience that I think segments everyone at this time of the year. And we all see the seasonable promotions going on and going on heavy. So how is scaling in Q4 any different than scaling any other time of the year? Why do we even need to look at it as a separate event and not just look at it as the same event? And that's the question we're going to be talking about now as well. Cool, so campaign timer, Q4 campaign required precise timing to align with key shopping dates. We'll talk about these specific dates and where we need them to be in order to make sure we use them correctly. Seasonable trends, consumers behavior shifts around the holidays to affect targeting. Ad cost fluctuations, we'll talk about this quite a bit. It's quite simple, but we just need to put the emphasis there. And then of course, creative variations, tailoring ads to festive themes and crucial before scaling Q4. And this specifically, is where it can come, become super, super important for tools like ChatGPT and all those stuff that are now flooding the marketing game into the market. And we'll talk about how to capitalize on that as well as much as possible. Cool. So why is CPM um, so hard actually, right? Why is it actually happening with it? So increasing demand, right? We can talk about this a few different ways and, and talk about how it happens and why it happens and all the different areas to try and put them together. But when you, when you break it down, it's quite simple. We have a limited amount of advertisers, a limited amount of ad space, and the quantity of advertisement goes up, right? So when demand exceeds supply, the CPM will go up. Now, why is this super important to understand? Because the cost for advertising can nearly double in Q4, and some people are frightened from it, but it's not. There's a reason it's doubling. It's because everyone knows this is the opportunity to capitalize. This is the opportunity to make money for the next um, quarter and stuff like that to really push you and make sure you get there as much as possible. So I am saying this, be cautious, right? Make sure you're spending in the right places. Finish your testing before so you can really focus on scaling in Q4, but don't be afraid of the high CPM. Don't, don't make it scare you because if you have the high CPM, it means you're targeting people that a lot of people are targeting. Right? And if a lot of people are targeting those people, there's probably a reason for that. So there's just a, a, a kind of something that we need to connect to and it makes sense to us. Cool. So in order to be ready before Q4, test now. Guys, Q4 marathon starts now. Don't wait until the 1st of October in order to start doing this. Plan it out. Right? We need to make sure we have the complete creative testing. We want to perfect the audience testing already to understand what's working for us currently, to really come in a prepared place we want to finalize budget planning, right? This is crucial for us to be able to identify with scaling, right? Because maybe, for example, we have some suppliers that pay us late or we pay early, whatever it may be. We want to make sure we're not going to run out of fuel and we can really pump the, the fire where it's needed. Uh, determine promotions and offering. Don't come and say suddenly a week before, what should we offer on Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Get this stuff ready now. What are we offering a week before? What are we offering on the weekend? What are we offering last minute after? Get all these deals, all these bundles, calculate profit margins to understand what's your break even on all these offers 
and really make sure about that. If you want to talk more about break even, you can go on to look at one of the previous webinars. I explained a lot how to calculate profit margins and break even and all those kind of stuff as well. So you can go to academy at magic, academy.magics.com. There's a bunch of other content there as well regarding the previous webinars. Next, we want to optimize landing pages, right? At the end of the day, we need to remember what products are selling, what, what call to action sells, and all those kind of stuff in the pages. Because even if we get the best traffic there, we need to try and capitalize on the conversion rate to get it as high as possible in order to make sure we can actually make those conversions count. Specifically, as CPM goes higher, the traffic will come down, and therefore we will need to make sure we convert as much as possible. So make sure you optimize landing pages before that as well. So how does Q4 actually look, right? And I'm, obviously there's a lot more, but I'm just taking out the big ones to kind of identify them. So we have Halloween, right? It's less of a shopping uh, thing, but people are already start in the spirit there, depending on what niche you're in, it can be very, very big for you. Thanksgiving, right? People feel it. Specific promotions like anything you buy from us, $5 goes to charity, all those kind of stuff towards Thanksgiving, work like gold. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I don't need to say anything about that. We know the power behind that. We know what it does. Festive period, right? And on purpose, I started this on the 10th of December. Guys, this is a period. People are shopping and shopping and shopping before they stress to get out. So make sure you get the shipping dates correct, right? So if you, for example, you take two weeks to ship, there's no point pushing hard towards Christmas. Push hard before towards Christmas, promote a product that takes three days to ship. So that thing will be very, very important as well to keep in, in mind. And then, of course, we also have uh, uh, Boxing Day and New Year's Day, big stuff as well. We know the promotions are big, uh, so really capitalize to all the end and make sure you kind of like plan out your entire Q4 strategy. And we'll look at an example of how to plan something like that out. So let's just take out why we chose these dates and what's so important about them. So if we look at Halloween, 75 sales that happen towards Halloween are online, $102 average spend per person in the USA. That's massive. 36% of consumers look for inspiration on Facebook, right? If you're in this niche, you're going to explode 100%. Thanksgiving, 32 million online unique sales were recorded in 2022 for this period. This is massive amount, right? 12% uh, increase spent compared to previous year. And by the way, every number we look at, we see an increase year over year and it just continues to grow. Starting point of the holiday shopping. This is when people start planning their Christmas shopping already. This is when people are already planning for that. So you can already have those stuff on the website. Black Friday, Cyber Monday. This is only Shopify data. $7.5 billion on that weekend, only from Shopify merchants. Right? So obviously worldwide, this is much, much bigger. But just on Shopify, that is just massive. And it's a 19% increase in Shopify from the previous year. And look at the stat. $325 average spend per person, right? This is what people are spending on this weekend on average, meaning that the intent here is as high as can be. Make sure you, you maximize on that. Festive time, 209 billion was spent online in 2022, people shopping. People shopping for Christmas spent $209 billion, right? I don't think you realize what a big number that is. That's massive. 1,387 average spent per household. Guys, this is where you capitalize. This is where you make the money of the year. 60% of consumers start the festive shopping in November. So this is all connected to what we're talking about here already. So let's look at the behavior. 75% of consumers prefer free shipping over fast shipping, right? So that's something that we need to talk strategy about. So when we look November, you want to focus on that free shipping. When we're looking towards um, December, closer to Christmas, you want to shift that to fast shipping because people need the gifts now. This is the last minute shopping. Pay more attention to email offers, right? People look into the email. You know, most people just do read, read on the promotions. Now people are looking because the intent is already there. So make sure you have your email campaign set up as well. 67% plan to buy from an online marketplace. 62% buy gifts in the week before Christmas, and 23% rely on social to make uh, decisions. Another stat that I found astonishing a few days back, 67% actually look at uh, influencers and stuff like that in order to decide their Christmas shopping and they trust them. 
for all those kind of stuff as well, right? So we will talk about UGCs as well later in, but that just shows you how big this is going to be. Cool. So let's look at kind of like a Q4 checklist of what we need. So we need to determine budget scaling. We need to test audience and creative copies. We need to review testing results. We need to plan offers create email campaigns, determine action timeline. And the action timeline is one of the most important things that we'll need to talk about as well, to understand exactly, have a military precise uh, understanding of when everything turns on, when everything turns off, what ads we want to use and what ads we don't want to use at what point. So just as an example of a calendar, um, you can see this is, for example, November, stop Halloween campaign, create Thanksgiving ads, create thanks automations, Black Friday ads, go live, turn off, turn on, understand all the kind of stuff. And this is how you need to have it in your calendar. Make sure everything is written, written down. And of course, this is not going to be manual, right? It's going to be written down in your calendar and you're going to automate this. You can use automations to turn Black Friday campaigns on, Black Friday campaigns off, be more aggressive and all those kind of stuff as well, right? So it's not all manual, but it is important to have this in front of you to understand what is happening every single day to, in order for you to make sure you can maximize on these kind of stuff. And this is November. So in October, you'll have the previous stuff and already now in September, you should have all the timeline ready for your testing. You need to have all your creators already tested and ready to go for Q4. So just an example of a Q4 account structure, what we wanna do, we wanna have big focus on acquisition, be aggressive there, ABO testing new audiences all the time, CBO, we're gonna have a nice scaling Black Friday campaign, an extra CBO scaling campaign to go for Black Friday, Cyber Monday specifically. I would recommend that weekend so you can even duplicate this campaign, call it Black Friday, Cyber Monday, just to go super aggressive on that weekend, just to make sure you can capitalize as much as possible and creative testing. Uh, you do have a, want to have a small portion of this on because you always want to test more creatives, but the big portion of creative testing you want to be doing it for. Now, retargeting and retention is where you're going to be pumping a lot of budget in here compared to what you would previously do. Usually, you want to monitor the frequency that a bit more um, hesitant Depends, right? You want to have a retargeting 30-day frequency of six, seven, eight, nine, right? But in Q4, don't be afraid to push because the intent is so high, right? If it's performing well, don't be afraid to push it, even if the frequency is on the high end. Make sure you can capitalize and maximize on all these conversions and all these users because they're all going to buy something. Make sure they buy it from you. And then just another way to look at it, like a bit more breakdown, is just like the evergreen campaigns. Uh, the scaling campaigns and the creative testing campaigns just to kind of see how it looks like. So this is really where we're going to be a bit more aggressive uh, in the Q4 structure as well. So why use automation? So first of all, minimize manual, manual labor. Guys, we know this. Time is money. We don't want to waste money. We want to use automations to duplicate campaigns, duplicate ad sets, uh, increase budgets, short-term scaling, long-term scaling, really identify those kind of opportunities turn on the Halloween ads, turn off the Halloween ads, turn on the Christmas ads, turn off the Christmas ads, right? Super easy to do to identify. You select the date you want it to turn on, you select the date you want it to turn off, and you're good to go, right? Obviously, we can talk a bit more in depth on how to do this, but really, really important to use as much automation as possible. Humans make mistakes. We want to minimize mistakes. It's, it's human nature. Uh, we want to maximize profitability. So when there's an opportunity there, we want to make sure we push on it, even if it's 4 a.m. and we're sleeping and we're busy selling to someone in Belgium, but we're based in the U.S. Ensure data-driven decisions. Uh, take the emotion out of it. I've, speak, I've spoken about this quite a bit in the past. You know how it is. If you create an ad or an ad set that you love a bit more, you thought this ad would be a really good ad, but it turns out it's just not performing, you, you would probably give it a bit more time because you have some emotion in it. But the automation doesn't look at it like that. It's going to just take it out of the equation and make sure we make data-driven decisions. And that's the main focus we want to do. So for example, a few things we can use for scaling is we can use the SERP strategy, right? Which is a daily strategy to maximize conversions, right? So that's like a short-term strategy. And you definitely want to have all these short-term strategies active on Q4. So as you find an opportunity, you capitalize on it. Then you also want to have a long-term strategy, which is scaling your winners over time, which just looks at a longer time frame, a three-day, seven-day time frame, to really make sure you can capitalize and maximize on the long term as well. Duplicating ad sets, right? And this is where it can be more aggressive, for example. So you can have this automation only work for specific time frames. And then what you want to identify is, for example, if a campaign or an ad set is working really well, let's duplicate it. Assuming it's top of funnel, big audiences, millions of people, frequency won't be an issue there. And that's really how we can do it very effectively. And then, of course, bid testing, right? Very strong scaling strategy. 
you can select a duplicate of multiple different bids all very very fast and very very effective way of doing it in order to make sure we can get a lot of a, a lot of um, different bids tested at the same time in order to make sure we can capitalize on the winners as well so this is something you want to use as a scaling strategy as well during q4 Next thing I want to talk about is how to utilize ChatGPT for the copywriting for Q4. And this is where it really becomes very, very easy. Um, marketers used to need to break their head on these kind of stuff day and now, and now it's just given to us, right? So just a few simple examples of how I would use it and how I do use it for different kind of stuff. So product descriptions, of course, ad copy, landing page content, and social media captions. But let's take a look at what it actually looks like. So for example, what I can do is I can give it my best ad copy, uh, um, start 2023 with a band, da, 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 whatever it may be. Uh, and then I ask it for giving. Um, so, and then I ask it, for example, to, to make it for Halloween sales. And just like that, it gives me two variations of Halloween special, get ready to spook and slay, right? These kind of fast uh, things that people love to see around Halloween. Very easy. And I can start testing these throughout. Super simple. Take the ads, put them in, start seeing how they perform for you. And you can really move into this. And just Halloween, you can take the same thing and make it longer. So say, fantastic, but now that was short, I wanna make it longer. All I need to say, make them longer. And there you go, we'll make it longer for me. With the click of a button, I do copy, I do paste, I send it, I try it out. I can really be precise, I can really be uh, deep into it and make it and make sure we convert them. Um, now I say, give me two variations for Christmas. And there you go, it gives me two variations for Christmas. Now, these are all the things you need to be doing right now in September, so you don't have to deal with this in Q4. You can have it already ready in your account. You can have the ads ready turned off in the account, and then you just have an automation to turn it off on due date. Right? There's no reason to wait a week before Christmas and start stressing about this. Make it now. So as you can see, click of a button, gives us amazing different um, uh, ad copies. You can see they're great. Um, now make use of more emojis in them. There you go, added more emojis. If you like emojis, it makes it stand out for you a bit better. Go ahead, easy to do. Um, add a 10% discount for the weekend. Um, just like that, wrap yourself in luxury this Christmas, give yourself a gift. And there you go, for this weekend, we're offering a jolly 10% discount to make your Christmas merry. Right? Very smart, very, very simple. Nice call to action. Obviously, afterwards, it's in the description as well. You're going to emphasize that 10% off. But just like that, you can get so many different options. And if you say you want it for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we'll give you Black Friday, Cyber Monday. If you say you want Boxing Day, New Year's Eve, whatever it may be, really make sure to capitalize this and maximize this to the best of the capabilities because this is gold for marketers. Specifically, if you're an agency and you need to do this for a lot of clients, you can just do this with one hour, finish all your clients. So next thing we want to talk about after we capitalize that is how to capitalize on a specific section inside the um, uh, meta ads, TikTok ads, wherever you may be, and it's reels uh, and all those kind of stuff. They are very, very new to the game, right? And this still gives us a very unique opportunity to go ahead and put as many budget there as possible to try to duplicate and put in ads there. The reason it's that is, is like that is because this we expect lower CPMs there based on data we see. And as we talked about Q4 CPM being so high, this is where the opportunities will be for us to identify those areas. So definitely look into this, try it out and see if it does give you this edge, definitely have a strategy prepared for this. And that comes as well with the UGC game, right? The user generated content. We understand that this is how people want to shop. People trust what they see other people, real people, not models doing, right? And that's where we need to make sure we put our emphasis on as well. So 51% median improvement in cost per uh, incremental conversion for lower funnel conversion events. Uh, so what we need to do, entertainment, digestible, make it relatable. We know that it needs to be authentic. It doesn't need to be fake. That's what people want to see here. So UGC, 35% more memorable than any other media. It's massive. 50% more trusted than any other media. That's massive. If you don't have UGC ads, have them now. Get your content creators. Get someone doing content for you. doesn't matter. Get them all prepared now. Get one for Halloween, get one for Christmas, get one for uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Get them all ready now. Don't wait a week before. And just so you can see, 79% of people say UGC highly impacts the purchasing decision. Right? Put effort in this in, in uh, Q4 and UGC. This is what's going to be the game changer for you guys. 
if you make it or don't. Creative is king. Make sure you have effective UGC set up there. So top uh, creative tips. It's more authentic. It creates trust. Make it easy to get lots of content. It brings products to love. It presents ad fatigue um, and less uh, perceived as advertising, which that's what people want to see. They don't want to see ads anymore. They want to see real content, right? And they want to, without, the better, pe the, the more people watch the video without realizing it's an ad towards the end, the better it probably is and the more it's going to convert. So something that's actually really cool now is you can actually use the Magic's ad library for inspiration. So if you're going to Magic, you're going to ad library, you see there and you can see inspiration there to identify what works uh, well. And what's really nice is it works on a really cool AI feature of us too that you can search whatever it is. So if I'm um, selling Nike shoes, I can search Nike shoes and I can see a bunch of content that's done that. And what's really cool here is then I can filter based on this content, give me uh, videos Give me short and medium videos, and then you're going to see a bunch of UGCs for Nike shoes. Take that content and use it. And what you can see we can do now as well is we can save it to your favorite board. So you can create boards of inspiration, a bit like Pinterest, right? You can create inspiration boards for you and for your designers so you guys can work together. And then you can say, for example, wow, these UGCs are working really well or I think they're working really well. The quality looks really good. I would convert from this. Let's save these 10 UGCs send it to my content creator, send it to my designers, right? And have them continue working on this. So super, super new tool, super, super effective. It came out in the perfect timing for Q4. So make sure you use those uh, boards and, and, and create a few boards to play around with and go into it. Currently, it's still uh, free of charge, early bird. So make sure you capitalize on the opportunity to use this tool as well. So that's it um, for today. Uh, talking all about Q4 and all those kind of stuff and everywhere you want to go into. So really, really uh, appreciate everyone uh, showing up. I know we had a small delay at the beginning, so I appreciate you guys um, sticking through and staying with us uh, throughout it. We're going to open it up for Q&A, which is always the funnest part and the most interesting part to jump into and look into all these different things. Uh, um, so yeah, really now the stage is, is yours to ask any questions you may have any strategy you want to talk about, any strategy you want to implement or thinking of implementing, let's take a look and, and put it in. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much, Danny. Um, we have a question right away from Emma. She's asking what insights can Magix provide to help businesses create Q4 specific ad creatives and messaging that resonates with their target audience? One more time, we can create... Great ads for it. Okay, so that's what, what insights can Magix provide to help businesses create Q4 specific ad creatives and messaging that resonate with their target audience? Wow, so every target audience is different. It's a hard one to answer, right? But um, I think at the end of the day, you're just gonna need to use all the creative insights tools specifically to identify what's working for you, what's not working for you, what's good, what's not good. Uh, and really make sure you can um, uh, take advantage of all those tools, see an aggregation of your data, and then learn how to capitalize on that data. Uh, there's no one truth to everyone, but I think the creative insights tool here is going to be probably the biggest game changer with the ad library. Uh, so if we identify opportunities in the creative insights and then in the ad library, we can go ahead and put them together. Brilliant. Uh, we've got a, a few questions coming in from our great community asking right here. Um, John is saying uh, he's using uh, multi channels to advertise, right? So, so uh, Facebook, um, Google. He's using TikTok, and he's asking how can how can we use Magic's maybe to look at historical multi channel data to better prepare for Q four um, on a whole for all my advertising channels. Okay. So I'm assuming you're an e-com owner, right? You own the store, you're not an agency. So your main thing you care about is profit. You don't really care about the, the small stuff here and there, what got more sale, what campaign performed better, whatever it may be. So if we want to maximize profits, right? We want to look at the omni channel results, right? So what I would recommend doing is going to one click report. Then you can see, for example, um, your, your, your net profit, right? That's what you want to kind of identify. How much money you're spending and how much money you're bringing in overall you want to look at all of them omni channel together you don't want to try and like look at one specific part of that and that's where you can really identify the opportunities you can break down results from all the different channels in one nice dashboard and then you can see where you want to push more fire into the flame 
So I'd recommend the first place would be to open a 154 dashboard uh, and, and get it off started with. Obviously, if you need help building this dashboard, you can message the team and we'll get on a call and build it together. Brilliant. Thank you, Danny. Um, we have another question. This is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, they're asking, do you recommend running sexy ads for Christmas? <laughs> I always recommend running sexy ads, right? No, I'm joking. Uh, it depends what uh, captures the ad. It needs to be in good taste. We need to make sure we don't get banned on Facebook, which is more important. Uh, but overall, if you're able to capture attention without getting banned, all the best. Brilliant. Uh, we've got another anonymous attendee. I don't know if it's the same one, um, but they are asking, I'm wanting to use your integration service. Do you offer any promotions? And when would I start that service to make the best use of it for Black Friday and Cyber Monday? Okay. I'm assuming the integration service, you're talking about the one click report, which integrates a lot of different channels into one place that we talked about before. Um, so yeah, there's still an early bird, bird sale for it. Uh, 67 lockdown deal. Um, take opportunity while it's there. I think there's a small amount of spots left for this lifetime deal because we capped it at 500 and I think uh, we're about to close it. So make sure you guys uh, get this lifetime deal uh, and make sure you take the most of it. Uh, yeah, if you need help with that, you can send a message to the chat or we'll send it in a bit in the chat here as well uh, with the link to that promotion. Brilliant. Uh, we have a question from Matthew Gavin, and he's asking, how would you build a strategy to get the most out of catalog ads for large online um, for large online retailers with large product catalogs? Hmm. So large product catalogs or uh, large people that have a lot of products in general are very difficult uh, to identify the winners for them because you need to test a lot of things. But the way I would want to do it is I would want to first look at my profit margins, try and identify the products that have the best profit margins, obviously under the same niche that so makes sure to put them in the same catalog actually makes sense. But once we've done that, go and start testing those out first because it's easier to be profitable on Facebook on them, right? For example, if I have a 50% profit margin, my break even is two. But if I have a 25%, uh, a 75% profit margin, the break even is like a 1.7, 1.65 or something. So therefore, those ones with the profit margin as well would start off with and then just test them out and move down towards that as you continue going on. Great. Casper uh, is asking, why should I really use Magix instead of normal meta ad suit? Yeah, so, so it's, a, it's a bit of a longer question than the, for this webinar, but in general, Magix gives you a lot of extra value than the normal Magix suite um, doesn't. Uh, happy to schedule a time and go to a full Magix onboarding with you. Uh, but to summarize, we try and do like three main things that um, enhance Meta, right? We're not trying to replace Meta, we're trying to enhance Meta. We work very closely with Meta and trying to fill the gaps that they're missing. Um, so number one, analyzing the data. If you want to analyze the data properly on Meta, right? You need to export your CSV file, start doing a lot of weighted mean, send it to your data analyst, and maybe you'll start getting good results. Yeah, if you want to see an aggregated data of your targeting, it's a click of a button. Yeah, if you want to see what effect does the, what age and gender work best for you, what groups. If you want to look at a specific creative and identify what age group works best for that specific creative, you can do that very easily within Magic. So the analyzing part is massive. Next, you have the executing part, right? You can build four campaigns, a full funnel, like position, retargeting, retention, right? Or across four different campaigns, if you put the engagement in there, 20 different ad sets with 100 different ads, right? We can do that probably if you experience in seven minutes in Magix. That will probably take you three to four hours at least in Meta. So if you value time, as I'm sure you do, that's another big reason. You save a lot of time in the execution and our audiences work really, really well. Number two, and then number three is the automation, right? We automate as much as possible. Don't do any manual work, automate as much as possible, increasing budget, decreasing budget, uh, turning on, turning off, increasing bids, duplicating ad sets, a lot of different things we can do with the automations. And we can do them based on dynamic fields as well, which that becomes even your automation so much more powerful because if an automation works on a fixed number, it's very limited. But if you do it dynamically to your funnel stage, for example, it can always optimize relative to where it is. And that's a very, very uh, strong advantage to always optimize relative to where the account stands. So there's obviously a lot more stuff and it's just an overall answer, but if you want to dive deeper into it, you can pop me an email after and I'm happy to go through it more in depth. 
Okay, great. We have a question from Katie Harrison. Now she's asking, what are some of your recommendations for audience testing um, when tests keep failing? So the creatives that kill it with broad audiences just don't seem to be working right for anything else. So what would your recommendations for setting up that audience testing be? Okay, so if it worked well for broad, right? Scale broad, right? Duplicate, continue that broad. And there's a lot of ways to scale broad, right? For example, you can now do broad with manual bids. You can now do broad, but break it down by age groups or by countries or whatever. Maybe you can continue scaling broad quite a bit. That's number one. Number two, test very large lookalikes. 15%, 20% lookalike, test them out. See how they work for you, right? It, Facebook limits you to a 10% lookalike, but in Magic, you could create lookalike all the way up to 20%. So test the larger lookalike. Once you identify a strong lookalike, let's say a 15%, 17% lookalike that works well for you, you can start capitalizing on that by adding on interest on that. And then you can start narrowing down that audience and maximizing that. But the main thing is start broad and then afterwards narrow down the, the area you start with. Because a lot of the time people try, for example, 1%, 2% lookalikes. And we know from the data that post is 40 and the small lookalikes don't work as effectively as the larger ones. So definitely start with the bigger ones and then break it down from there. Thanks, Danny. Uh, we have another question from Ishmael asking a brilliant question right here. So he's saying, I sell products to Arabic speaking and Muslim audiences. How can I tailor the festive period to people that don't celebrate Halloween, Thanksgiving or Christmas? Nice. So first of all, awesome question. Uh, so I think it depends, first of all, on the, on, on the country. And maybe Ishmael, I don't know if you can write there. What country are you targeting? Okay, so anyway, but the idea is like this. Oh, mainly Saudi, Saudi, UA, and Qatar. Okay, so, so I'll answer it first of all for that. So for, let's say, for example, you targeting the Arab uh, um, or Muslims uh, in, uh, in the US or in Europe and stuff like that, the festive season is still in the air. People still buy, people still shop because it's out there. If you go to specific countries that have specific cultures, it might be a bit more difficult to come and say, let's shop for Christmas, right? And then you need to see and understand, is this not the correct audience to shop for Christmas and stuff like that? And you want to more capitalize on the Q4 and stuff like that. Um, to be honest, in the Gulf countries, you would probably know better than me what works better in those kind of uh, seasons. Um, but in general, I think it's uh, all over, right? Like for me, at least anywhere you go in the season, whatever it is, you always feel it, right? doesn't matter where you are, you feel this kind of atmosphere in the air and it kind of like rubs off on you. So I think one way you can look at it is maybe make it in like a uh, humor, right? Try and, be, try and be funny about it, right? Like uh, we may not have Christmas, but we still have the Christmas deals, right? Something like that. And then I think we'd maybe try and get you quite a good um, conversion rate with those kind of ideas. Cool. I can see you said nuts. Awesome, man. Uh, um, questions, what else okay. is this? Just a few more questions coming in here. Um, we have a question that's from Paul, and he's asking, what, strat what strategies should you employ to maxis maximize ad reach and impressions during the competitive Q4 period? Maximize ad reach and impressions. So first of all, you need to ask yourself, do I need to maximize ad reach and impressions, right? Then the day with performance marketers, we want to increase, we want to maximize conversions, not impressions, right? If for some reason, I don't know, maybe you work for some big retail company or supermarket that wants to just get the name out there, then just do obviously um, reach campaigns and, and optimize for those kind of areas. Uh, but usually in Q4, you want to try and get as much sales as possible. So I wouldn't recommend looking at, the, looking at it as a KPI even, right? What I would recommend doing is seeing how you can reduce the CPM as much as possible, right? So how can we reduce the CPM as much as possible? So first of all, make sure you have a high Facebook score, number one, quality score. Number two, try and get the best um, creative and landing pages out there because Facebook can identify higher quality and then it goes into the calculation to calculate your CPM. So by the way, not don't know if you guys know, but that, that doesn't work that everyone has the exact same CPM, right? If I have a better ad creative and better... Uh, strategy and all those kind of stuff, Facebook will reward me with lower CPMs. If I'm promoting spam, my CPM will be higher. 
Great. Another question coming in from Megan this time is asking what type of ad creatives and messaging tend to perform the best for Facebook ads in Q4? Um, messaging for Facebook ads in Q4. Um, so first, first of all, I think there's no one answer. Every brand is very different, right? If you set up $5,000 watch, you're not going to do the same message as a $10 uh, pair of socks, right? It's very different messaging. Uh, but I do think we need to less work on the introduction, more on the conversion. Right? If a lot of the time people are focused on the acquisition funnel brand awareness, even the call to action a lot of the time is learn more and all those kind of stuff, people are much more high intent. Kind of like your cold audience is already your warm audience in Q4 and your warm audience is already your hot audience. So I think that's just the way you treat them. If that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. So I hope it does to you guys as well. All right, more questions trickling in. We have a follow-up from Ishmael. Now he says, I'm already a user and a fan with the basic plan. Um, can we expect any Q4 deals from Magix? Uh, we always hope fans and people uh, that need a nice push for Q4. So message us afterwards and I'm sure we'll be able to sort something out for and to help you. Great. Uh, Katie is also saying here yeah, that um, her UGC ads are doing incredibly well in Instagram stories. What can I learn from the metric to help me optimize and test better? So first of all, you need to check how much spend is going in Instagram stories, right? So for example, if it's only spent $5 and it got you a 20x ROAS, it doesn't really, you don't really care about that too much. So if you really want to test that more, force budget into Instagram stories and make sure you go ahead and... Uh, put some budget into this so you can really test it out correctly. And then, as you said, if you want to actually test out these things, you duplicate them, put different placements and, and do it. What KPIs to use? At the end of the day, you want to get sales, use sales. If you're not getting sales, use initiate checkout. If you're not getting that, use add to cart. But try and be at the bottom of the funnel as possible for these KPIs. Right? Because a lot of the time, for example, I speak with people and they're saying this UGC works fantastic. It has a three outbound CTR. The cost per click is below uh, 20 cents, fantastic, but it's not getting any sales. And then when we look at the UGC, we see why, wow, because the message of the con of the ad has nothing to do with what it's selling. So people are coming in and then they're getting disappointed because it doesn't it doesn't meet, meet each other, right? So that's why I'm saying focus on sales and not any other like CTR or outbound CTR impressions or anything like that. All right, great. Uh, I think this one is a pretty good question it's coming from nigel he's asking how can you create a sense of urgency in q4 facebook ads without appearing spammy mm. yeah it's a good question um, yeah and i think the sense of urgency is always there right? like limited time limited price deal uh 24 hours uh, final sale whatever it may be uh, and i think that's the best way to do it right you need to check try out a bit of hooks Try to test out a few different hooks, and you can already test these hooks now. You don't need to wait for Q4. Test these hooks now. Say, for example, um, already now, even if it's not Q4, sale for the weekend, sale for something, sale for whatever it may be, 24 hour sale, free shipping only now. Try all these different hooks and then see what converts better already now. So, in Q4, you're ready to scale up these hooks and not, or not rely on them. Let's do one last question. Okay, great. Um, see, there's one popping up now from Katie again, and she's asking, what are your recommendations for targeting gift givers in Q4 when our pixel usually find the best, uh, the, the actual buyers? So when the buyers are normally the audience, not gift givers. Okay, so first of all, Katie, thank you for staying on because you reminded me of something special that I wanted to talk about. Um, so I'll just say that and then I'll get back to your question. So if you could just leave the question there for a second. Guys, towards Christmas, people search gift cards. The, the numbers on this is actually insane. Make sure you capitalize on this towards Christmas. Two weeks before Christmas, start promoting gift cards because people are, don't have last time shipping. It's not going to get you in time, whatever it may be. Start promoting gift cards. I don't know if I can actually find this graph one second to show it but it's actually insane the amount of people that search gift cards um for q4 anyway i'll look for it after and i'll try and share it with you guys and find it but it's so first of all promote gift cards make sure you're selling gift cards make sure it's out there 
um, on, on your website and it's available specifically towards Q4. You can sell gift cards and make sure you do it towards Christmas. I mean, and make sure you can sell a lot of gift cards. People make a fortune on this towards uh, Q4, towards Christmas. So now back to your question. What are your recommendations for targeting gift givers? Okay, so first of all, some depends on your niche you're in, but something that you can really uh, work on as well is, for example, um, people that, so first of all, there's a, there's a category in Facebook, it's called like a, or not a behavior, it's not a behavior, but it's a category of like, um, people got engaged in the last year, people do that, people do that. And then for example, what you can do is if for example, my target audience is women, so then I can say, I can target people that got engaged in the last year, two years, whatever it may be, they are most likely in a relationship, but then filter that audience only to men, right? And then we can start working like that. So that's the kind of idea I like to look at it uh, and try and work on those kind of areas. By the way, you can also target people that have birthdays, right? So it's not targeting friends of birthdays because everyone has friends on Facebook with birthdays, but just target people that have birthdays and say, buy yourself a gift, right? as well. So there's a lot of those kind of uh, audiences there that can be very, very effective. Cool, so we went a bit over time, but that's okay. Uh, thank you so much for everyone that uh, is with us. Great session, it was awesome uh, having you guys as always. See you in the next one. And we will of course be uploading this webinar to the Academy as well, so you can watch it again and build your strategy out there and a bit more um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a bit in your own pace, let's say it. Awesome. So thank you so much and have an awesome evening or morning, depending where you are in the world. Cheers.